Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are talking about commercial Toro spindles. And in front of me, I have an array of Toro spindles over the last 25 years. The purpose of this video is to show you how the spindles have evolved over this time and why they are better today than they were. All right, first off, this is a very early spindle. If you still own a mower with a spindle with a saddle on it like this, you take very good care of your stuff. Uh, because this spindle probably stopped running around 2004. So you're like 19 years old now. This is the problem that is trying to be solved. So if you have a blade with a center hole like this and you tighten it with a bolt like this, what happens is it's regular thread and as the blade gets dull, it starts dragging through the grass. Like picture the grass not cutting away cleanly, like the grass is holding and twisting this blade this way. You can feel it. If you were to stick your finger in here, pretend your blade is sharp so it's not getting a lot of drag, then it's not gonna put much twist on your finger. But as if, if you simulate drag of the blades, you can feel that it's twisting your finger clockwise. And likewise, it twists this bolt and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter till you can't get the bolt out and you've killed your spindle. So early designs featured this 5-8 center hole and they used a saddle to cure that problem. The blade was not twisting on the bolt and increasing uh, the tightness. The problem here was that when you hit something hard, and this could even be like a mound of sand, a sand hill or something, there was a lot of force and where did it go? it went here. So they put this aluminum block in the top and the intent here was for this piece to break, for this keyway to shear or this to crack and that would absorb the impact of a stump. So people with this spindle typically replace this quite often. So then they switch to this spindle. I can say I remember this spindle being on 2000 seven and eight models so it's starting then and running all the way up until 2020. This is one with a grease nipple on the top. This is one without. These are basically interchangeable. Some series of mowers had the greasable version and some had the, the sealed up version. As they were experimenting with these two designs they were really looking at their warranty data and seeing which one's better. Let's do we seal up a sealed bearing and keep it totally dry? And is that gonna last better? Or do we fill it to the top with grease and give you access to add grease to keep it full of grease? The data was showing that this design actually lasted longer. I know that you guys in internet world are probably screaming at me right now through the screen, but that is what we saw. These machines have awesome warranties. The warranties are five years long. And Toro's plan is to not buy you a spindle. And there's a lot of brands that have spindles that fail many times during the warranty period, but typically not a Toro. So the idea is to design it to be flawless, to last five plus years, and they don't have to buy you a spindle. So this design typically had taper bearings in it like this. And these are bearings you would find on like wheel hubs. And we've heard that over time they decided that this bearing was not perfect in this application, that a ball bearing like this with round balls in it performed better in this type of application. I don't know, that's over my head. But the theory behind this spindle, the sales pitch, is it was eight inches wide, super wide compared to all the other spindles on the market. It had these nice support wings to make it really strong. And in this case, same blade bolt, we'll go in here like this. If your blades are dull and you're getting a lot of drag or if you're hitting things where you needed this before, this blade is just going to slip around the bottom of this spindle. Well that slipping led to a lot of overly tight bolts and what we would have to do is come in here with a blowtorch and cut this washer free. That would allow us to take the bolt off of it and then on occasions we would have to replace your jack shaft to remedy that over tightened bolt problem. A lot of brands of blade bolts like the Gravely blade bolt. You have to thread it right as it enters the hole and it is super hard while you're laying down crooked, reaching up under the deck to get that bolt perfectly straight and get the threads going. But Toro has recessed threads so that you can just put the bolt in the hole and start tightening. Just makes it go in flawlessly. Definitely superior engineering there. 
So then we went from this spindle to seeing a lot more of this spindle across the series. This is the spindle that's on the grandstand. Fast forward to 2020, this was when the next major change in spindle design, and that is when Toro went aluminum. Aluminum runs cooler. There were others out there running aluminum, and Toro kind of held out saying that, you know, this is heavy duty, it gives the deck a lot of strength, you can hit things and it's not gonna break. But Toro also owns Xmark, and Xmark was running an aluminum spindle. And Toro had all the data. They had the warranty data on Xmark, they had the warranty data on Toro. And what they were finding was that Xmark spindles were not breaking as much as Toro. So in 2020, they adopted the Xmark's engineering. Their spindle's a little different, but it's the same idea. It's the same bearing, it's the same housing. Toro's housing is bigger, like this one, so it's a little stronger. But they, this system here is what solved this problem and this problem of the bolt tightening up and also giving the blade somewhere to go when it hits something so you don't have all those forces being bottled up. And that's, this is when the blades, 2020 and, and since, have switched to this larger 15 16 center hole and this sleeve that goes up into the blade. So now when your blades are dull because you didn't sharpen them when you should have, and there's a lot of drag pulling this blade backwards, this is splined up into your spindle and it's not putting any twisting force on your bolt. It's just sliding around this sleeve. And when you hit something hard like a stump, this slides around the sleeve. So all the problems solved. And in addition to that, they made this spindle more waterproof more sand proof, more monofilament proof than any of the other previous designs. So I actually have a cutaway of what this spindle looks like all together. And down here in red, you can see what Toro calls the labyrinth. And that is multiple 90 degree turns that water, sand, and debris have to pass through in order to make it to this bearing right here. And then also a really nice rain cap umbrella on the top that just keeps this whole system dry, and clean and running for a long time. And then on top of that, this housing is cheaper than any of these. So superior design, it lasts longer. In the history of this spindle since 2020, we have never had a bolt that we couldn't get off, a bolt that was overly tight. And we have been replacing a lot less spindle bearings. Eventually time wears everything out. If you catch it early, you can just put a new bearing in there. And if you don't catch it early, you can replace just this piece here. It's not a fully complete spindle, so you're gonna have to reuse some of this labyrinth piece and this umbrella and your top pulley. But I think this is $140. It's a lot less than some of these that have gotten up into like the 400s. Well, that's it. That's everything there is to know about Toro's commercial spindles through the years. This is the spindle going forward from 2020 on. And there's nothing to be scared of because it's all good things. It doesn't tighten your bolt and the bearings last longer. And when it is time to replace it, it's cheaper. Be excited about this because we have enough data to confidently tell you this spindle rocks and it's going to give you less problems. If you like this video, watch some more of our videos. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.